you have your Bible, come on, say, I got mine. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's go to Romans 12, 2. Romans 12, 2. As we continue in this series, we'll be dealing with advancing forward, moving forward, moving upward, and moving onward. Amen. Moving forward, advancing forward, moving upward, onward, and forward. Amen. Forgetting those things that are behind me. I'm done with that stuff. I'm done with the things that are behind me. I'm done with yesterday. I'm done with the stuff that plagued me. I'm done with what happened to me as I grew up. I'm done with people in my past that have quit me. I'm done with that. I'm done. I'm not looking back. I'm not looking around trying to find folk that don't want to be in my life. If they don't want to be there, let them go. Let them go. Stop chasing folk that don't want to be with you. Amen. Don't chase them. Amen. Amen. God obviously has some people that are intended to no longer be in your life. And so when they're no longer intended to be in your life, leave them alone. Because God's got somebody else for you in your life that can meet you where you are and not meet you where who you used to be. The problem of it is that too many of us hang on to people of yesterday and you are burdening yourself with yesterday's mess. Amen. And so today, I want to just touch on some things today. I want to just help you to understand when you change your thinking, you change your future. When you change your thinking, you change where you're going. When you change, but you've got to transform your mind. And it all starts in the mind. It starts with a seed in your mind. Even Jesus lets us know that sin does not just happen. And it starts with a seed in your heart, in your mind. It's a seed that is planted. And so therefore, we want to make sure that we uh, understand how to change things in your life. Amen. But let's go to the text real quickly. And do not conform to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove that is that that is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Come on, let's go to the message Bible and see what it says there. It says, so here's what I want you to do. God helping you take your everyday ordinary life, your sleeping, eating, working to work, going to work and walking around life and place it before God as an offering. Embracing what God does for you is the best thing you can do for him. Don't become so well adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. Instead, fix your attention on God. You'll be changed from the inside out. Readily recognize what he wants from you and quickly respond to it. Unlike the culture around you, always dragging you down to its level of immaturity, God brings the best out of you develops well-formed maturity in your thinking. Amen. And so what you want to make sure that you do is you want to make sure that you're not so into the, to the, to the, the world and what's going on around you that you look just like it. If you look just like the world, if you're just like the world out there, it's because you just because you go to church, you have not changed some things and you've got to change. You ought to be peculiar. If you're not peculiar, if people don't look at you and think something strange about you, it's because you look just like them. And, and, and let me help you. Sometimes you have to be very careful of even fitting into the church culture. Because there is a such thing called church culture. The church culture where when you know all the, uh, everybody's business in town, you know what's going on in everybody's church, you know what's going on in everybody, every pastor's life, you know every child uh, of some pastor, you know who everybody then got a divorce, you know everybody's business is because you have conformed to the church standards. I hear many people say today, I don't hear none of this church mess. That's where you ought to be. You ought to be where people don't come to you with church folk foolishness. Now, some of y'all look at me real crazy. Uh -uh, honey, I want to know all the business. You ought not want to know other folk business. Because just as sure as you know everybody else's business, there's somebody talking about your business. So today, I want, you to help to, I want to help you to understand that when you transform your thinking, you then transform your life. Transform. Come on, look at somebody and tell them, transform your thinking transform your life 
Amen. As we, as we continue to look at advancing forward and advancing, uh, uh, you know, toward a better future, advancing uh, to the point where you change things in your life, you have to understand your life is much like making a cake. If you make a cake uh, and you're unsatisfied with that cake and then you turn right around and you take that same cake and you put the same ingredients in it and you put it in the same oven in the same pan and if you put it at the same temperature and and leave it in the oven for the same amount of time and when you take that cake out if you're expecting something to be different about that cake than the cake you made before you are fooling yourself something has got to change. You got to change something in the recipe. You got to change the, the way you put uh, the oven. You got to change something about the, 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 the cake. You've got to change. And most often you've got to change some of the recipe. And so many of us today, even some of our leaders, as we go through leadership training on Wednesday nights, I'm watching you. You sit there and you're writing down all these things, but then you hand your stuff in, you run your meetings and you got the same people doing the same thing. Thing, you got the same fly, fly, flyers and the same uh, 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 business plan and you think things are going to get better for you this year. You're expecting to fail because you ain't changed nothing. You've got to change some things in your life. And so I want to help you with just a few things uh, to help you to understand how you've got to change your thinking in order to transform your life. Now, I know, I know some of you come, uh, look, Pastor, I come to church because I want to do the traditional click your heels three times, fall out in the floor, say I'm going to get a new Mercedes, drive past the Mercedes Benz dealership over and over and over again and come back to church and keep with that same thing and think you're going to get it. No, you're not going to get it. You're going to keep on doing the same stuff until you change something. You got to change your job. You got to change something. Prayer does change things, but prayer or faith without works is dead. You've got to do something. It's not just, and that's the, the problem with me is that too many people go to church expecting God to do everything. God says, I will do it, but you got to do something inside of this too. After you get up off of your knees, you got to get busy. You got, come on, let me help some of y'all marriages. Your marriage ain't going to change just because you get on your knees and pray. You got to do something after you get up off your knees. Either he's got to do some changing or you got to do some changing. But after you pray, there's got to be some changing in the household. There's got to be, if you get down on your knees uh, and say, God, help us in our marriage. We need some help in our marriage because he keep on spending all the money. And God, help him to stop spending the money. But you keep giving him all your checks. What do you think is going to change? Nothing's going to change until you all sit down at the table, pray over it, and then say, God, now help us to understand what to do with our finances. And you make a commitment together that you want to change the finances. But as long as you're getting on your knees and nobody's willing to change, there's not going to be any change in your marriage. There has to be some change. Somebody say change. Matter of fact, some of us, we done been to marriage, to marriage, to marriage, to marriage, to marriage, and you wonder why your marriages keep failing. It's not the marriage process. It's not the women that you're marrying. If you done have five wives and you can't figure it out and it's all of them, it ain't all of them. You got to change you, my brother. You got to change yourself, my sister. You cannot keep on doing the same thing because eventually you're going to end up with number six, number seven, number eight, number nine, or somebody going to kill you and just knock it all out. But you got to do some changing. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's get, just get a couple of things, and I'm going to help you with this right now. The first thing that you have to do in, in changing, uh, transforming your thinking, the first thing you got to do, you got to understand who's got your soul. Who's got your soul? Who's in charge of your life? Who's in charge of your life? The first thing you have to understand is that you belong to God. I belong to God. I'm going to give my life to God. I'm going to let God transform my life. I'm going to let God do some changing in my life. And you've got to let God have control of your life. If you let other people have control of your life, you're not going to be able to transform your thinking. Matter of fact, you've got to get out of control even in your own life. You've got to give God the control in your life. If you're going to transform your thinking, you've got to change and say, God, I keep messing this up. And so, God, I'm going to, find, I'm going to follow your direction I'm not going to try to do this all by myself but God I'm going to pray and then I'm going to get up and do what you tell me to do now that's a hard thing to do for some of us because sometimes uh, God does some things that I don't understand 
Sometimes, anybody want to be uh, honest about it? Sometimes God will lead you some places that you don't intend to go. Sometimes there's some things that God will make you do. God will take you back to some old wells that you did not intend to deal with, but there's some lessons that you had to learn there. Let me, let, me, let me take that back and rewind. There are sometimes God will take you back to a place where you were supposed to learn some lessons over there, but you skipped over there and you went way down here. You missed those lessons. And so when you say, God, I want you to be in control of my life, God will send you back to those lessons for you to learn those lessons because until you learn those lessons, you will never ever be able to achieve where you are today because you've got to learn that in order to get here. Y'all not saying anything. Sometimes God will take you back to attitude adjustment. you 30, 40, and 50 years old, and God takes you back to a place called attitude adjustment. God, why are you taking me to attitude adjustment? I'm too old to be going to attitude adjustment because you did not learn it when you was 20. And that's why you can't get along with nobody. That's why you, people don't like you on your job. That's why your friends don't like you. That's why the family pulls the shades when you come. That's why when you call people, everybody's always busy. Because you need a change in your attitude. Your attitude is determining your altitude. Because you now are at the place in your life that you can't get any place as talented as you are because you're not willing to change your attitude. You've got to let God do the leading in your life and stop letting other folk lead your life. Matter of fact, some of y'all need to stop letting church folk lead your life. Preach, Pastor Simmons. You, you, just because you're part of the church does not mean that you're supposed to step into some clique in the church and you're supposed to be just like everybody else. Just because you're a single woman in the church does not mean you're supposed to join the, the Lonely Hearts Club in the church. No, get away from them lonely women that sit up and down men all the time because ain't no man going to look at you and you over there with that Lonely Hearts Club that's always talking bad about men. You need to be seen by yourself so a man can find you, but he can't find you and a group that he don't want to be bothered with. You got to get to the place where you can grow all by yourself. You've got to change your thinking. Changing your thinking means you have to, number, number one, understand who's got your soul. Number two, you've got to make sure that you are de defeating the enemy in your mind. Defeat the enemy in your mind. Defeat him. And some of us say, I'm a Christian. The enemy don't work in my mind. There were times that I've been in the pulpit, a pastor, having to preach the word, and the enemy was messing my mind up. I'm being transparent with you today. The enemy loves getting at church folk. Is this too, is this too, is this too much for y'all? The enemy likes church folk. And, I, and it bothers me when folk run around talking about, I, that's why I don't go to church, because all them hypocrites up in the church. That's a foolish statement. Do you not go to the gym because of all the fat people in the gym? I go to the gym, and when I'm in the gym, there's a whole lot of people that are out of shape, a whole lot of people walking around with new outfits on, a whole lot of they're just there because it's a social place to be. A whole lot of people in the gym are there January and February. They make these commitments that they're going to change and they're going to work out. Gym packed in January and February. All kinds of fat people, all kinds of people out of shape, but that's where they're supposed to be. I applaud, I, I, and I did say fat and out of shape because that's what they are. And, and so uh, you, you applaud people that are either at least trying. Now, when you with your fat out of shape self, you ain't even in the gym, but you're talking about them. You need to get to the gym, at least walk in the gym. That's the first step, walk in. You, you, you can't not quit because, matter of fact, what I do, I weed through and find the people that are in shape so I can make sure that I look at them instead of looking at the fat, out of shape people. I want to find the person that's built, built and bulked up. I want to see them. And every time I see them, that's my hope. But everybody in the gym ain't like that. It's about four or five. So I look at them four or five. That's the same way it ought to be when you come to church. It's a whole bunch of hypocrites up in here. It's a whole bunch of people with problems up in here. But you can't go by them. You ought to weed through them and find the people that's doing the right thing. And you need to look at their life instead of looking at everybody's life in the church. You can't not quit because of what other folk do. You got to make sure you defeat that enemy and the enemy will always tell you you don't need to be there. 
Matter of fact, we got too many people that go to churches all around the Bay Area based on personalities, based on the singing. No, I need to be where I can hear Jesus. I need to be where I can hear a word. But I may not ever meet that preacher, and I don't care to meet the preacher. I want to know, do I meet Jesus? I want to know, is Jesus in there? And can I get a word from the, I don't care nothing about the preacher's life. I don't care nothing about the preacher doing. As long as I'm getting a word out of, out of that, I'm going to stay out that preacher's house because I want the preacher to stay out of my house. And so you got to make sure you don't let the enemy defeat your might. Your life and your mind. Get the enemy out of your mind. Number three, you got to make sure you can't, uh, you understand, you can't go where you can't see. You cannot go where you cannot see. If you can't see it, you can't go there. You got to see it before you get there. You don't just go get a Mercedes Benz. You see yourself driving it first. You don't just get a Bentley. You got to see yourself driving a Bentley. At my house, I have a model Bentley sitting on the table as soon as I walk in. Every day I walk in, I see that model Bentley, and I see my, myself inside that Bentley driving it. And before this life is over, I might die the next day, but I'm going to drive me a Bentley before I leave this life because I see myself there. I didn't buy my house, uh, I didn't just walk up one day and say, I'm just going to buy me a house. I saved for it. I saw myself in a house. Even before I saw that house, I saw myself in a house. Some of the things that we have to look at, back in the day, our parents taught some of our ladies some things. You, you remember, ladies, back in the day, maybe some of y'all didn't do this, back in the day, you had something called a hope chest. And in that hope chest, you began to put things away. It wasn't just because you were going to get married. Even when you was getting ready to uh, get yourself an apartment, you're going to move out your mama's house. You ain't supposed to stay in your mama's house. Uh, the, the wise parents, you start making your children save up for stuff. You start making your children put money away. You start making sure you get your bath stuff together, get your, get your spread together, get all that stuff together. So when you get ready to move, you can get up out of my house and you got all your stuff. You ain't got no excuse to come back because you hoped real good. You got to help people hope. You got to see yourself in it first. It's, I, I, just a while ago, I, I prayed. And I said, uh, I, debt free, come to me. About five or six of y'all applauded. The reason why some of y'all ain't going to be debt free, because you can't see yourself debt free. You got to see yourself in a debt free. Anybody see yourself debt free? Anybody see yourself where you can walk up and pay cash? Where you can walk in? You got to see yourself in it. You got to celebrate yourself in it. Anybody see yourself happy? You got to see yourself happy. And what does happy look like? Happy might be you ain't got a lot of friends. Happy might be you all by yourself because happy people don't hang out with a whole bunch of people. You'll see happy people got a whole lot of money walking up in the theater all by themselves and not knowing all these they, they just got the same pair of jeans on they had last time you saw them because guess what people that are rich live like they're poor and people that are poor live like they rich some of us we spend all of our money on everything you got to stop trying to impress people and learn to save your money if you're going to ever get there you have to see yourself there you saw yourself graduating before you graduated you don't wait till you get to be a wife to, uh, to, uh, uh, to, to start seeing yourself uh, as a wife. The Bible says a man that findeth a, a wife findeth a. You don't become a wife after you get married. Okay, let's go back. A man that findeth a. In other words, you was a wife before you got found. Now understand something. Some of y'all, some of you women, you got this mentality. I ain't trying to be no man's wife. It's a good thing to be a wife. It's a good thing. But does that mean I got to, I got to be in the kitchen all the time? That ain't what that means. It means that I'm there for that man. It means I'm a partner with that man. Now he might do all the cooking. I might not do none of the cooking, but I'm down for that man. Because if you can't be down for nobody else, you will never make a good wife. You got to be able to be a partner. You can't be selfish and be a good wife. You got to be sometimes where you got to give up something in order to be for that man. Because guess what? A man, a man, I didn't say a little boy. I said a man. Because a real man that's looking for a wife and finds a wife, he's ready to give up himself for her. And then when she's willing to give up herself for him, they got something. They give up themselves for each other.
other because they found each other. You got to make sure you see it before you bid. I'm going to give you one more and I got to get done. You might want to come to the next service or about the next service. I got 17 of them. And I ain't giving you all of them either. See, if I had that piece of equipment, I could put them up on the screen. Y'all going to help me get that piece of equipment? And I, amen. Amen. So the next one, here's the next one. Here's the next one. You have to learn, uh, you have to learn to leave your comfort zone. If you're going to transform your thinking, leave your comfort zone. Some of you stay in comfortable places too long. You've been on that same position too long. Same folk too long. Even on your Facebook page, there's some folk I don't want to like my status. Watch who likes your stuff. It tells you something about you. You gotta get out of your comfort zone. Comfort zone. You're comfortable. Comfortable. Some of you like being around that type of people because it makes you look good. You purposely hang out with all the fat people that are fatter than you because you look like the skinny one in the bunch. Comfortable. If everybody in the gym, if, 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 if losing weight and being in shape was easy, everybody would be in there. It ain't easy. Anything worth having is going to take sacrifice. Even, even having money takes sacrifice. Having a bank account takes sacrifice. It means you can't buy everything you see. I'm the greatest window shopper in the world. I still window shop. Every, every, every weekend, I'm window shopping because I'm window shopping. And I've learned, Fred, not to buy what I think I want on the first time. I've learned, look at it, leave it, and if you're willing to drive all the way back over to the bay to get it again, to look at it and get it, then you want it, really wanted it. But if you, if you don't feel like I ain't going back over to get that, you didn't need it in the first place. You've got to leave your comfort zone. Comfort zone. What are you been doing that just makes you feel comfortable? What are you doing to press yourself? If you're going to change some things, you've got to change your comfort zone. You've got to get out of that comfort zone. Amen. Let me give you one more and I'm going to leave you alone. Learn to think right. Think right. Always in somebody else's business is bad thinking. Always in other folk business is bad thinking. You should always think about what, you, what you're doing. Matter of fact, uh, I carry a notebook with me where I, each morning before I go any place, I sit down at the table and I write my schedule out and I write the things that I've got to do today. The things that I, I go back and I review my goals. And the problem with many of us in life, we want it, but we ain't willing to write it down. But I put it, I, I just remember it in my head. Uh-uh. You will forget it by the time you walk out the door. You got to write it down. Go back and review it. Anybody like me, you wake up in the middle of the night, you got to write some stuff down. Because, you know, God will start talking to you in the middle of the night. Even this morning, I said, God, why you got me woke up at this time of morning? He said, because I'm trying to talk to you. I need to tell you some things. And God was telling me some things that I need to do because, he, number one, he's taken me out of my comfort zone. And number two, after he gets me out of my comfort zone, he wants me to change my thinking because the world will have you think everybody is against you. The world will have you think that people have left you and now you're a nobody. God told me this morning, I did not have some folk leave you because of you. I had them leave because of them. I needed them to get away from you so I could take you to another level so I could do some things in your life. Stop trying to get them back because if you got them, these people don't want to hang out with them kind of people and they got to see that you're free of the riffraff because don't nobody 
anybody want to hang out with the riffraff that's doing the same old thing and sitting up talking bad about other people? People that are flying high need to be around other flyers, need to be around other eagles. They don't want to hang out with pigeons and turkeys. If you're going to change your life, you got to change your thinking. Change your thinking. Some of y'all, and I don't know who I'm saying it for over here, until you learn how to forgive some folk, they always got power over you. Let me go over here with this. Until you learn to let forgive some folk, even when they wronged you, forgive them and let it go. Matter of fact, when you see them, hey, how you doing? Because what you got to do is you got to get to the point where you appreciate your haters. Missed it, missed it, missed it, missed it. You got to, matter of fact, I stand here today. I appreciate every hater I ever have. Thank you, haters. Matter of fact, I got a dollar bill for each one of you because you have pressed me to a new level in my life. You have pressed me where I realized that God was trying to do something and I was trying to hang out with you and you hated on me and I could have gave up, but God won't let you give up when you're the cream of the crop. When God has an anointing on your life, you can't give up even when you want to give up. I wanted to give up, but God would not let me give up. Why? Because God kept me here for a reason. God kept me moving for a reason and when God keeps you for a reason you better keep on moving even when people don't want to go with you you need to press toward the mark of the higher calling in Jesus and stop looking backwards come on look at your look at your neighbor tell your neighbor transform your thinking and you will chance transform your life 